Good evening. A couple from South Oxfordshire are searching around the world to find a bone marrow donor for their two-year-old son. Ali Kim, who lives near Abingdon, needs the transplant to save his life. There are 8 million people on the bone marrow register. So far, there's been no match. Lucy Bickerton reports. It's now a desperate search for the Kim family. They've held around 65 bone marrow screening drives, testing thousands of people, targeting Korean and Asian communities, both at home and abroad. The sooner we can find one, the better. He's at the top of the list. So as soon as we find that match, um, they're ready to put him in straight away for treatment. Ali has chronic granulomatous disorder, or CGD, a life-threatening condition which means his immune system doesn't work properly. Even a small infection could be fatal, but the transplant could cure him. With his mother by his side, he spent nine months in hospital last year in London. Although still in constant need for drugs, Ali was allowed home to be with both his parents and his older brother just before Christmas. The doctors are never sure how long they can maintain it. He's on... 20, 30 different medications just to keep him where he's at. He still has a lot of um, abscess and damage in his liver. Alistair needs uh, antibiotics three times a day by IV. Um, so that's 6 a.m., 2 p.m., and 10 p.m. Knowing the transplant will be the lifesaver that Ali desperately needs, the Kim family continue to search. They say somewhere, someone out there is a match, and they won't give up until they find that person. Lucy Bickton, BBC South Today. Simon Butler is from the Anthony Nolan charity. The organisation helps people find bone marrow donors. A short time ago, he told me why for some families it's so hard to find a match. Well, for a patient in Ali's position from an ethnic minority background, unfortunately, it is a lot harder to find the best donor. So about one in five people uh, from an ethnic minority background like Ali will find the best donor for them. That's compared to about 60% of all patients. So that means that there is a real need to grow not just a, a bigger register of potential stem cell uh, donors, but also a better register, which means a more diversified register, which is much more representative of all different sort of uh, genetic heritage. Um, and that's why we are working really hard to recruit more donors um, between the ages of 16 and 30, and particularly more male donors um, and donors from ethnic minority backgrounds who you know, will allow us to make sure that every patient uh, in need, regardless of their ethnic minority background, um, can find the donor that may well save their life. What about the procedure? Do you think people are put off because they think it's painful? I think there is a bit of a misconception that something like stem cell donation may be a bit painful, but we save the lives of, of three people a day. So we talk to lots of donors who go through this process and what we hear from them is that it is not a painful process and in fact it is such a rewarding fantastic thing to do to give someone this chance of life the procedure itself is is a lot like giving blood um, it is just a longer you you go into a hospital bed and, and you'll sort of sit there um, while the stem cells are donated through the bloodstream um, and you know the worst thing about it so donors tell us is actually that it's just a bit boring but at the end of the day you are giving someone that chance of life. Simon Butler thank you. Thank you.